welcome everyone uh, to this video uh, we continue talking about the autopilot and specifically uh, we're going to talk about the VNAV feature it's a little bit uh, not straightforward but we want to focus on just the basic fundamentals in order to be able to utilize it safely and effectively during an actual flight and uh, there's something I need to explain first before we actually jump in in the cockpit and use the G1000 MFD for the VNAV uh, navigation feature and let's say for example that the aircraft is cruising okay we are cruising here okay like going this way and uh, there's a waypoint down here that we want to get to okay and that waypoint we specify in the VNAV what the angle that we're looking for let's say for example at uh, three degrees right so I want to descend with a three degree angle of course everything here is a little bit exaggerated and uh, what what the uh, G1000 is going to do is gonna create some sort of like a range that is acceptable let's say this way and that way okay and uh, let's say for example now I'm going to use VNAV to cross this waypoint on the bottom at a certain altitude let's say that altitude that I want to uh, I want to like uh, cross uh, point B at uh, let's say for example one zero thousand okay and I am here now okay here's the aircraft and I arm VNAV since I am before the acceptable range or within the acceptable range uh, in that case VNAV uh, will be utilized if I am here before the acceptable range uh, it's not gonna start descending immediately right uh, and if I am here within acceptable range it's gonna arm uh, uh, the VNAV and start descending immediately and if I am here uh, nothing is gonna happen because I am beyond the acceptable range uh, or tolerances of VNAV to descend down now let's talk about situation number one I have two situations here if I arm VNAV greater than five minutes from the top of descent or if I arm it uh, less than five minutes from the top of uh, uh, top of descent obviously here is going to be the top of descent okay and here is the bottom of descent okay if I arm it more than five minutes just remember if I am within one minute so one minute to go to go the V the V path uh, is gonna flash in white and you're gonna hear uh, an annunciation uh, vertical path and that's sort of like telling you you have to confirm that you still want to use VNAV and it's also a reminder that if you have set the bottom altitude so that the aircraft can descend okay so if greater than five minutes I'm gonna to have to reconfirm again less than five minutes I don't have to reconfirm and one minute to go I'm gonna hear that annunciation vertical path all right and at that point it's just sort of like a reminder V path the VNAV is about to en get engaged right now and is going to start descending the aircraft only only if I have an altitude set on the altitude tape here's the altitude tape and I have an altitude down here that is below or lower than my current altitude let's say I'm cruising here at flight level uh, 200 for example if I have the altitude uh, selected here is flight level 200 the aircraft is not going to descend on VNAV, right? I have to have an altitude here selected that is below the current level. And I usually I'll select the bottom altitude in my clearance uh, so that VNAV gets engaged. Okay? And with those concepts or basic concepts, let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit and see how it works. All right, folks, uh, welcome back. Now we're in aircraft in the DE62, and let's say we're flying from Catalina. Uh, to uh, Los Angeles all right so I'm going direct now to Seal Beach VR and from Seal Beach I'm gonna request uh, into LAX the Atlas approach runway 25 left from Trendo so I'm Seal Beach at Trendo and I look and see I need to cross Trendo at 5,000 and then the next waypoint is Honda intermediate fix at 3,600 and then the FAF at 1,900 okay so right now I first thing is there are three steps I have to do and those three steps are abbreviated by the letters FAV or FAV, first three letters of the word favorite. Okay, so F is for the flight plan. I check the flight plan against the chart. Good, I have trend of 5000. Honda is white. You need to remember blue is what's going to get respected by the VNAV. 
the white is just advisory numbers they don't mean anything at all okay so blue so it's going to get respected so in that case if i want 3600 to be a hard restriction here with for vnav i can enter that manually three here you go 3600 and press enter and now it became blue is going to get respected all right so the first thing is flight plan against the chart second thing is altitude pre-select so i have to put an altitude lower than my current altitude for vnav to actually engage third thing is is the v for vnav itself to arm it right let's now illustrate two things we're going to illustrate vnav direct feature and also vnav let's see each c tells you cross uh, seal beach at 6000 right and i'm at 8000 right now what i can do is i can first thing is I checked the flight plan. I did that. Altitude pre-select is the second step. I will select 6,000 feet on the altitude, lower than my current altitude. Then I can use this feature on the bottom of the MFD. It's called VNAV Direct. And VNAV Direct, folks, only works with the next blue number. Look what happened. It's going to trend to 5,000 feet, but I want it to go to Seal Beach at 6,000, like ETC told me. So what am I going to do? I have to turn that one into blue. So I'm going to now turn this one into 6,000, press enter. Now it became a hard blue. Here we go. And activate VNAV direct. It looks, we're kind of a little bit far right now. It's a very shallow uh, flight path angle. And it did create a top of descent point for me. I think I can barely see it here. But if I close the flight plan, here's a top of descent point. It's a white circle, as you can see on the MFD. and with a little dot in the middle all right so back into fly plan and again just remember that vnav direct only gonna take you to the next blue point all right here's the top of descent it's a very shallow angle as you can see we're waiting to get there and we'll catch you in a couple of minutes and you can see here that there's a timer to the top of descent. Less than five minutes, it's not going to ask us to confirm VNAV again. If it was more than five minutes, you're going to get vertical track announcement and it's going to flash in white. You'd have to press VNAV again to confirm that you still want to descend on VNAV. All right, folks, so you can see now the time to the top of descent. As you can see on the time on the bottom of the, of the MFD, it's about one minute and four seconds or so. So we're getting close there. And we're ready with our hands on the throttle as VNAV gets engaged. Then we're going to have to reduce the power as we descend. Please disregard that value of the load, the 100% load on the MFD. Uh, this is inaccurate. It has to do with the customization of the Simeonic G1000 with respect to different aircraft. And with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's kind of quirky. It's not getting data. I think about the load. Uh, intermediate loads uh, unlike for example I explain anyways just let's get back now to the topic we've got now about 40 seconds left and we'll see what's gonna happen okay you have top of descent within one minute V nav is flashing it wants me to reconfirm it again I'm gonna press it again here we go and my hand on the throttle to get ready so you wanted me to confirm And now you can see the magenta path, as you can see here. Here we go, it's coming down. And that's the path we're going to descend on to 6,000. And waiting, it's still armed because it's so white. V, v, you know, V path is white. And now it's green. The aircraft is descending and I'm reducing the power and descend on the vertical path to the next altitude constraint alt v vertical okay and that is the 6000 and you can see it in the magenta 6000 on the altitude tape in the magenta which means it's going to respect that so it's going to descend and it's going to stop the descent at 6000 feet also you'll be able to see a bottom of descent also a white circle with a black dot in the middle and it's it's located at seal beach it's telling you that's where the bottom of descent is going to be 
Bottom of descent is flashing now. Within one minute, I put my hand back on the throttle and get ready to add some power because the aircraft is about to level off. Now let's say that ETC cleared us uh, after Seal Beach. After Seal Beach, cleared direct Trendo, cross Trendo at or above 5,000, cleared for the ILS approach runway 25 left, which means I can descend on the ILS approach. 5,000 has to be respected at a Trendo and the other altitudes until the final approach fix. Okay, so let's say this happens. Okay, here comes 6,000. This gun aircraft now is about to level off. And here we go. Alt V is uh, flashing green, is, ca is capturing the altitude, and I'm adding power to, my, to the aircraft. All right, ATC now cleared me for the approach. I'm going to now put the lowest, the final approach fix altitude, which is 1,900. Okay, and V path is armed. And here we go. It wants me to confirm it again. V path is flashing, so I'm going to confirm it. I pressed on it again. The air aircraft shot the track a little bit, but there's a top of descent point right there, according to a three degree flight path angle. And you can see now in the magenta, the path is coming down and the next altitude constraint is 5,000. All right, and now it's gonna engage. Vertical path is green, I reduce the power. And since I've been cleared for the approach, folks, I am, again, I'm from the school that says activate or arm approach before the FAF. But we know that that the, 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 the magenta is going to twist the localizer in the leg before the FAF anyways. Okay, so in that case, I can even arm approach on the autopilot. And look at this. It's not going to interfere with VNAV at all. When the uh, magenta switches to the localizer, nav one, uh, then in that case is gonna capture the localizer and the glide slope. So everything is pretty much automated in the vertical and in the lateral. So as you can see here, aircraft is following the restriction, it's respecting the next restriction to 5,000, pair the ATC clearance with the total cost strain to add or above 5,000, and then cleared for the ILS approach. Runway 25 left into Los Angeles. Here he goes, capturing 5,000, hand back on the throttle, add some power. And the altitude is captured. Now, very good point. You can see now, it did. It couldn't get us down to 3,600 for the next point. We are above the path. See the magenta? So I need to descend down to it manually to catch up to it again. So I can now activate vertical speed. As you can see here, I'm going to exaggerate it a little in order to bring the magenta back. Here we go. I'm trying to bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, and then it's going to take over. Watch this. Here we go. Now I'm back on the vertical path <coughs> to meet the next restriction. <coughs> Excuse me. So sometimes when you put a value that cannot be met in the middle, it's not going to be met. And you'll see the path in magenta below you. You can catch up to it if you have to uh, using a different vertical mode to descend. So now I am descending down and the next altitude restriction at 3600 is in the magenta and is going to get respected. Here we go, the altitude is being captured. I put my hand on the throttle, 3,600. Here comes, oh, here we go, that's what I was talking about. Since the next leg is the FAF, the magenta switched automatically to the localizer, and since I had approach armed already, it's gonna capture the localizer and the glide slope. So I need to slow the aircraft down now. Give it a chance to catch, catch up. and it's gonna catch the localizer, and it's gonna catch the glide slope. Okay, so what did I illustrate here? I illustrated, for example, VNAV direct feature. VNAV respects only the blue, okay? The white is not respected. And if I put a value myself manually in the blue, that is a little bit cannot be met, it's not gonna be met. And the VNAV is not gonna engage. In that case, I need to intervene and do something about it, right? 
and I can also arm in parallel to VNAV and have VNAV running and I can also have uh, approach armed at the same time knowing very clearly that uh, is <coughs> that uh, the glide slope or the localizer in Magenta can switch to NAV1 <coughs> excuse me when I'm inbound the final approach fix all right so what are the three things I need to watch out for again so in summary fab I need to check the flight plan against the chart then I need to pre-select the altitude which is the lowest altitude of my clearance then I need to arm VNAV just remember those three things also remember that sometimes you need to catch up to VNAV if you have to how to use VNAV direct and that VNAV only respects the blue values not the white ones the white ones are only advisory values they're not respected by VNAV okay and with that folks that's it we're gonna be landing at LAX